Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and keep watching more details. Savannah Chrisley says she started the process to freeze her eggs so she doesn't feel rushed to have kids. The Chrisley Knows Best star 27 spoke about her decision to move forward with freezing her eggs on an episode of her podcast Unlocked with Savannah Chrisley on Tuesday, September 24. In the past few months I spoke about how I was going to see a doctor about freezing my eggs. I went to that first appointment and wow. What a journey that was, she began. Chrisley went on to share she received an ultrasound and opened up about her experience with endometriosis. It's also very tough as a woman. I am 27 years old, I always had this dream. If you've grown up in the South, you know, you have kids young, you get married young, she explained. It's just a thing that has been. Noting that she wanted her parents to be around when she has kids, Chrisley's mom and dad Julie and Todd Chrisley are currently serving prison sentences for bank fraud and tax evasion. Chrisley shared that she didn't want to get pregnant until they could be a part of that journey. The reality star is currently taking care of her minor siblings, Grayson, now 18, and Chloe, 11. Obviously with my parents' situation, I want my parents to be a part of that journey. I also don't want to feel rushed to have a kid because, let's face it, it's 2024, Chrisley said. And I know there are a lot of things that I want to accomplish in my life, and I don't want to have to feel the pressures of, I have to have a kid right now. There's this ticking time bomb. That works for some people, and that's totally fine, she later continued. But for me, there are some things I want to do in Washington. Later in her podcast, Chrisley shared about her experience going to the doctor, saying it was absolutely insane. The doctor was like, you could very well get pregnant naturally, Chrisley said. But you also could have a problem conceiving. You won't have a problem carrying a child, but it's the conceiving aspect of it. For now, Chrisley is putting the egg retrieval process on hold until after the holidays. So I have started the process of freezing my eggs and I will probably go through that after Christmas, she said on her podcast. I would say first of the year, just because you have to have a few weeks, you have to do the shots, you have to do the retrieval, you have to do all of that. I was actually at work and randomly decided to just take a test randomly and found out I was pregnant, explained Serenity. When Serenity saw the positive pregnancy test, she knew her life would change. Her mind filled with anxiety and then happiness, as she knew she would have support from her family and the baby's father. When people don't accept it with me being so young and being a mom, the hate I can get from that, but I just choose not to accept it and just live on with my life, very happy to have such an accepting family because if I didn't, I'd definitely be struggling mentally with the pregnancy and all that added serenity. It's an experience her mother, Caroline Hildebrand, can relate to as she was also a teen mom with serenity at 17. Back then, she had the support of her dad and grandmother, and she remembers feeling judged when going to the doctor. That support wasn't there. Everybody is like, you're 16, you shouldn't be having this baby. I was worried more about how she was going than how I was going to handle it because I know no matter what, I'm going to love that baby and be there, added Caroline. This support gives her the strength to work part-time while being a full-time student and at the same time preparing for her son's arrival. She is currently participating in a fast-track program in school that allows her to take on additional credits to finish at her own pace. Mentally preparing for the baby and finally getting my life together and making sure that everything is ready for him, I think that's what has been the best because I've been able to get my life together and everything is going to be good, expressed Serenity. While working part-time can only pay for specific items, strangers were willing to lend a helping hand. She shared her story on Facebook and has received donations from people willing to help. Being able to know there's random people out there that think it's an amazing thing to support a teen mom helps mentally a lot and lets me know to hold on to that hope and all that, explained Serenity. It's the support she says she's grateful to have as many teen moms who aren't as lucky. Holly Joyner with Pregnancy Resources of Abilene says options are available for moms needing help, helping roughly 3,000 women annually. We will help anywhere from 2 three, zero, zero, teen moms a year, anything from a pregnancy test to helping with diaper wipes and formula, added Joyner. It is hard, but it can be done and you can still achieve your goals and all of your dreams. 
they still can happen, and there are so many resources in this community that you can tap into to help you in your journey to success, Joyner said. Something Serenity says she can relate to. Although there is a long journey ahead, she knows she has what she needs. Serenity is due in November and is expecting a baby boy. After graduation, she plans to start cosmetology school and focus on raising her baby. She is thankful for the help from her family and friends, who support her in making this happen. Les VGS, KLS. A teenager's online DNA test led her family to file a lawsuit Monday against a Las Vegas fertility clinic, alleging the wrong embryo was implanted in her mother 18 years ago and the parents who raised her are not biologically related to her, the 8 News Now investigators have learned. Until 2023, the teenager's parents believed their daughter was the result of in vitro fertilization, an embryo created, in this case from the father's sperm and a donor egg, the lawsuit said. An Ancestry.com DNA test showed the teenager's parents are not biologically related to her. My client had more tears than I've ever seen someone shed, because what he thought was his daughter, isn't, attorney Robert Murdoch said. Murdoch filed the lawsuit one day in Clark County District Court. The teenager's mother died in 2022 before her daughter took the test. Murdoch spoke with the eight News Now investigators on behalf of the daughter and her father. IVF is an absolutely amazing thing, Murdoch said. We are living in amazing times that we can help out couples who have fertility issues. It's an amazing thing. According to the lawsuit, the couple chose an egg donor based in Arizona to combine with the father's sperm to have a child. This was a way to have his heritage move on and it turns out it's not and it's a little too late for that, Murdoch said. According to the lawsuit, the DNA results showed that neither the teenager's father's sperm nor the donor egg were implanted in the mother. Instead, the implant embryo came from another Las Vegas couple, the lawsuit said. It was unclear what happened to the original embryo the one from the teenager's father and the egg donor. And if that embryo was implanted in another woman, the lawsuit said. Is your client worried that he could have fathered children that he doesn't even know about? 8 News Now investigator David Charns asked Murdoch. Because again, where did that embryo go? Murdoch said. Was that implanted in someone else? Nevada Fertility Carries and its subsequent fertility clinic run under the same doctor named in the lawsuit ceased operation in the early 2010s, records said. The lawsuit names the doctor and the embryologist who reportedly worked with the family. Both the doctor and embryologist remain working in the IVF industry, the lawsuit said. The doctor has no citation history with the Nevada Board of Medical Examiners, however, around the same time as the reported mix-up. Records show she settled a $30,000 lawsuit for negligence in freezing and storing embryos, documents, said. In this case, the biological child is not his, so as a result, he has to go adopt her, Murdoch said, adding her birth certificate will also have to be amended. The real point of this is finding out what happened, why and hopefully making sure that this is the only mistake out there. Neither the doctor nor the embryologist named in the lawsuit returned requests for comment Monday. The lawsuit cites negligence and malpractice and demands a jury decide any culpability and potential damages. In the year after the U.S. Supreme Court dismantled the constitutional right to abortion in June 2022, more than 200 pregnant women faced criminal charges for conduct associated with their pregnancy, pregnancy loss or birth, according to a new report.